Hi, I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures, and today we are getting into the meat and potatoes of the operation, which is the aircraft. This is an Air Tractor 502. Air Tractor is the manufacturer. They're made out of only Texas, right here in the good old USA. That 502 designation refers to the size of the hopper. The hopper on this airplane is that brown material that you can see. So that entire thing is the hopper. It's 500 gallon. They go down with Air Tractor to about 300 gallon. They go all the way up to 800 gallon. Now there are a couple manufacturers out there Air Tractor is probably one of the more popular out of any of them. The wingspan on this airplane is 52 feet. So from one end of the wing all the way to the other side, that end is 52 feet. The engine that's on the front is a turbine engine. It's considered a turboprop but it runs off of jet fuel. So maybe when you think of a turbine, you're thinking of a jet like a 747 or a commercial airliner. Those are a little bit different, but very much similar. Still a turbine engine, but it's driving a propeller, which is what's giving it thrust versus maybe a commercial airliner where the thrust is actually coming off directly from the engine. There's no propeller or anything like that on it. The turbine engine on this one is what's considered a Dash 34. It's 750 shaft horsepower. Also, while we're up here, you can see that there's a nice small pump located underneath the nose of the airplane. And that's actually what pressurizes the entire system for getting the spray out of the booms and out of the airplane. That pump has the blades on it and it's just the airflow that goes over those blades that makes it spin and makes everything pressurize. If we go into the cockpit, we can kind of go over some things there as far as what gauges are what and kind of how all of that works. If you're wondering, because a lot of people have asked this, the airplane does not fly itself. I'm in there moving the controls, moving the rudders all day. There's no automation to it. And you may think, well, that's kind of dumb. I would never would have thought it was automated. But with a lot of farm equipment this, these days, it is automated. A lot of stuff has auto steer, GPS controls it. So once you get it on its track, it will go through the entire field automatically and you don't have to do anything. However, that's not the case for the airplane. It's a little bit cramped to get into. Sometimes it can be difficult and sometimes you just have to fall into it. But once you're in, it's not so bad. It's the getting in and out that can kind of be cumbersome. There's not a lot of space in here. My head sits pretty close to the very top here, but what it lacks in space, it makes up in views. I have windows all around me. The entire top is all clear. So we, when you're in your turns and you're looking, you can clearly see everything that's around you. This really comes into play if you're flying in windmills. You really wanna see all of that. Going into the engine instruments, really right here in this cluster, it's gonna be my main engine instruments as well as two fuel gauges. And then on this side is kind of some more common stuff that you find in other airplanes, such as a turn coordinator, airspeed, as well as an altimeter. And then here I have a hopper gauge, which tells me how much chemical is actually in my hopper, as well as a pressure gauge. Again, this is coming up from that pump that's mounted up front that's actually pressurizing the whole system. So I can see exactly how much pressure I have in my booms when I'm spraying. Down here are the controls that really make the airplane go. This one here, does actually make the airplane go. That's the power lever. So pushing that forward is what gives me thrust and really makes the airplane go. This actually controls the propeller. You can control the pitch of the blades, meaning you can either have the blades like this, or you can actually get them to rotate like this. And that lever there is what controls it. Here is your condition lever, and all that does is controls the fuel. So when I start the airplane, I push that forward, and that adds fuel, and the engine starts. And if I pull it back, that cuts the fuel off, and the engine will quit. 
I also have to do some things with these switches here to get the engine to start, such as turning the engine over and getting it to spin, as well as adding igniters and then adding the fuel. Then it'll all start up for me. Again, like I said, I'm controlling everything here as I fly the airplane, as well as the rudders down here. So it's a pretty hands-on deal. As long as you're in the field, you're doing a lot of this the entire time. Sometimes it can get a little tiring, especially on those windy, bumpy days. I also have a GPS in the airplane, and what this does is it actually keeps me on my swath in the field. So this is the screen, and I have a little airplane on it that comes up, as well as the shape of the field. And then on the front of the airplane is the light bar. And that actually has LED lights that go across it that line me up perfectly with my swath so that if I go into the field and I start spraying and if I move over literally a foot, I can see it on that light bar and I can easily get back to the center line of the swath. Again, it doesn't do it automatically. I have to do that with the controls. And then down here are two levers. This one is my spray lever. So if I push that down, that will activate the spray. If I pull it up, that shuts it off. And then this lever right here is the dump handle. There's a gate underneath the airplane that ties into the hopper. And if I push this forward, that gate will open up and I can literally jettison the load in an emergency situation. It's not gonna be instantaneous. It's gonna take probably five to 10 seconds to get it all out. But in an emergency, that is something you can do. Luckily, I've never done it. It's not very common, but if that did arise, you could use that. Also, you don't always use these airplanes for liquid. You can put things such as fertilizer or seeds in the hopper and you can spread those. And if you're doing a job like that, you'd be using this lever to open the gate on the bottom of the hopper to let seeds or fertilizer out. Going across the field, I'm doing about 150 miles an hour. So it is a little bit of a fast paced job, but it's nice because it keeps things interesting. There's not a lot of lag and I really enjoy that. The hours in the day go by quick, which if you're wondering if it's a busy day and we're on a big run, then it is sun up to sundown or a little bit before sun comes up to a little bit after sun goes down. The last light of the day is when you're usually landing. If you guys have any questions about the airplane or anything that you wanna know about, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Also, I know that there were some things like the spray system and the GPS that I didn't dive too much into, but I'm gonna do separate videos about those, so be sure to check them out. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures. If you guys like these videos, please give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe.